All right, so today's topic is low carb alternatives. Um, and my name is Meredith, dietitian. Um, but I do want to go over low carb alternatives because it's a, it's a hot topic. Um, it's something I get asked about on a daily basis uh, because the approach we take here at the, the weight management center and after most bariatric surgeries is a low carb um, approach. So high protein, low carbohydrate, um, that's what we're aiming for. So, um, but to make this a sustainable lifestyle, you know, what are some things you can work into your diet over time um, to replace some of those high sugar, high starch um, things that maybe used to be in your diet? So, we'll get to it. Um, so, just even moving forward, keep in mind that none of these are going to be exact substitutions, you know. There's no way that zucchini noodles is going to taste just like regular spaghetti noodles, right? But just keep an open mind um, as you experiment with new foods and see if it's an acceptable replacement. Uh, over time, your taste buds will change um, as you get used to your new healthy way of eating. Um, you know, things you used to not like now will seem not so bad. And things you used to hate, now you'll love. Um, so keep an open mind. Um, and give your give your taste buds time to adapt. Because uh, like in my example here, you can't, can't expect to go from eating Cheetos and then immediately to carrot sticks, you know, without some time to kind of adapt to, to give your taste receptors time to, to change. So, um, Yet some of the things I'm going to share with you are pre-made store-bought items um, and they may be labeled keto or low carb since those are um, hot marketing um, terms to use um, on products now to get them sold. Um, and those are okay. Okay. Um, still, as with everything, keep in I call this the okay, better, best mindset. Like, um, so take pizza crust, for example. Um, a store-bought, pre-made cauliflower crust pizza would be okay. Better would be, um, you know, making one yourself, making a homemade cauliflower crust pizza. And best would be... Um, I mean, those are two good good options, but best would be maybe using like a portobello mushroom cap, you know, something that is just a vegetable, um, just fiber. So, so with everything, there's something that's okay, something maybe a little bit better, and something that would be best, which is ultimately going to be using your vegetables in place of these carbohydrates. So depending on your situation, where you're at, what you have available, that'll that'll vary. Um, I did want to give just a quick a breakdown on total carbohydrate because it can be confusing. Um, so when you're looking at a nutrition label, you see total carbohydrate there, 20 grams. Okay. Um, carbohydrates consist of sugar starch and fiber for the most part. Sugar alcohols is in there, but we're gonna stick with this for an easy example. Um, so sugar, starch, and fiber. And as you know, for weight loss, we're trying to minimize the sugar and the starch because sugar is the ultimate thing we wanna try to avoid. And remember, starch breaks down into sugar. It just takes a little bit longer. So those are we're trying to limit and we're trying to get enough fiber in our diet because fiber is very filling, helps keep you regular, all that good stuff. So we're getting our fiber from vegetables. Um, so of what I hear from a lot of people, I see the sugar and the fiber listed here in this example, um, but how do I know how much starch is in something? So this, they, they kind of make you have to figure it out on your own. Um, and it's easy to do. 
if you know what you're looking for. So to find the starch, what you're gonna do is you're gonna add up the fiber and the sugar. So here in this example, you can see there's one gram of fiber, two grams of sugar, so that's three, and you're gonna subtract that from the total carbohydrate. So 20 minus three is 17. So you're gonna have 17 grams of starch in this product. Okay, so that's, that's where they come up with that number 20 grams. So hopefully that, that helps clarify some things because um, a lot of, um, you know, snacky type foods, if you're looking at a nutrition label, it might be zero sugar, you know, but the total carbohydrate, you look at it and it's 45 grams, you know, so that tells you it's almost pure starch. Um, so here are some alternatives to bread. Um, you know, you can always use greens like lettuce wraps. You see here, romaine lettuce leaf, um, green leaf, red leaf, um, collard greens. Like if you parboil them, kind of partially boil them um, to soften them up, and then you can roll them up with your deli meat and cheese and make it into like a wrap. Um, cloud bread is something that is out there. Just a quick Google search will bring up um, different recipes. Essentially, cloud bread is um, egg, cream cheese, and cream of tartar. Um, you make it at home. Uh, and then there are multiple recipes for using almond or coconut flour to make your own low-carb bread at home. So those would be some alternatives to bread. Rice, um, there's a couple options here. There's um, riced cauliflower and riced broccoli. Uh, you can make it yourself, you know, get the head of cauliflower or some broccoli and um, you know, kind of pulse it in your, if you have a food processor at home, pulse it until it resembles rice. Uh, there's Wonder Rice, uh, which is made um, shirataki. It's from the, it, it's almost just pure starch, or I'm, I'm sorry, um, not starch, fiber. Um, and it's made from the con konjac uh, root. So it, it's, um, it's kind of a squishy, some people love it. I don't really care for the texture of it, but if you see shirataki rice or shirataki noodles, it is, it is a suitable option. Uh, quinoa would be something eventually. Uh, it is more of like a, a pseudo grain, um, but it is a complete protein and it does have fiber. So sometimes quinoa can be a replacement for rice. Uh, and then millet and amaranth are two grains that, that you could try to kind of, they're really, really small grains that might be a replacement for rice, just depending on the recipe and how you're using it. Moving on to pasta. So a um, couple different options here as well. Palmini is a brand that um, they come in little pouches and cans. It's made from the hearts of palm. Um, and so it's very low carb. And you can see here, it comes in linguine, lasagna, um, spaghetti, and rice shapes. So lots of different ways you can get it. Um, way many years ago, I used to just buy um, the hearts of palm. They come in little, um, like in the pickle section, <laughs> little just like tubes of hearts of palm, and then I would slice it and make, um, you know, a substitute for pasta. But now it comes in these fancy shapes and you don't even have to do that. So uh, there's zoodles, so zucchini noodles, just spiralize zucchini. Same thing with butternut squash. I haven't tried um, butternut squash this way, but Boodles is a thing, as I was putting this together, um, butternut squash noodles. 
of course, spaghetti squash, uh, you know, pretty, if you, if you haven't made it, it's pretty easy to make, um, you know, get the squash, cut it in half, kind of roast each half on a, on a pan, and then you separate the strands, just kind of pull it with a fork and it separates into little spaghetti like strands. So again, not an exact substitute, but if you season it right and have the right sauce or um, vegetables, protein with it, it, it can be a good substitution. And then, it, like I mentioned in the last slide, the miracle noodles made from shirataki um, and kelp. So kelp is a type of seaweed um, and they kind of look like glass noodles. So they, they're kind of clear. So I have a bag of kelp noodles at home, but I haven't tried it yet. Keep waiting for right opportunity to make some kind of maybe pad thai dish and use the kelp noodles in that. Um, for pizza crusts, uh, like I mentioned before, some people will just keep a portobello mushroom cap, um, kind of hollow it out a little bit, and then you, you know, you put your sauce and your cheese and your toppings in it like normal. Um, zucchini slices, also really easy. Um, those are kind of bite-sized, portion-controlled ways to maybe just get the taste of pizza. You can make your own chicken crust at home. Um, you, you just take like, you can take, you can make your own with ground chicken and you add like an egg and cheese, almond flour and your seasonings and you bake the crust first and then you add your toppings and put it back in the oven to melt the cheese and brown it. Um, or you could substitute canned chicken even, it's fine. There are recipes if you do a Google search um, for a fathead dough. Um, that's another popular thing, especially with uh, given the keto diet right now. Um, a fathead dough is basically almond flour, egg, cream cheese, and mozzarella cheese. So you kind of melt the mozzarella cheese and, and everything else, and it does resemble like a, a head of dough. So you could do that. That's going to be very low carb. And then um, cauliflower crusts which you can, like you see here in this example, the Green Giant, they make a pizza crust, um, or you can make it yourself at home. Uh, just follow the recipe exactly, and I can say this from example. Um, a couple years ago, I tried making a cauliflower crust, and I skipped over this step that um, said to, you know, really wring the excess moisture from the cooked cauliflower. I skipped that step and the whole crust, if you can even call it that, ran over the edge of the, the uh, cookie sheet and burned in the oven and just smelled horrible. So um, that was my epic fail experience with cauliflower crust doing it myself. But I've had, I've had good luck doing it all the other ways but some people swear by it. Just depends what you have time for. You know, is it, are you making something just for you or for family? These are some options. For chips and crackers, kind of snacky, munchy things, um, wanna make sure everybody knows about uh, the Inspire Protein Crunchers. Um, from bariatriceating.com. These are these are pretty good. I got the uh, variety pack, and it comes in four different flavors. Like you can see there, the barbecue, nacho cheese, grilled cheese, and movie movie time. So like tastes like buttered popcorn. Um, they look like little Chex Mix cereal, but they're protein. So. Um, that's another low carb option and and those bags are bigger than you would they're bigger than what I thought they would be um and and because it's very filling I got like three servings out of one little bag so if you haven't tried those those are good to have on hand when you just want something um salty crunchy that type of thing pork rinds easy to find almost anywhere very low carb uh, porquitos, 
That's um, this picture in the lower right hand corner. Uh, if you take prosciutto that you just get pre-sliced from the deli section, um, prosciutto, you bake it in the oven. Um, I made I made mine on um, parchment paper and you can let it cool on a rack like that, but um, it gets crispy and then it's like a protein chip. So you can eat it just like that or dip it. So you're getting your protein like zero carbs. Uh, Quest chips are another option. Um, you can find those like vitamin shop or online. Uh, I find that the tortilla variety of the Quest chips tastes a little bit better. Um, but those are pricey. They're pricier. Um, and they have a much stronger flavor. So um, a little goes a long way. But again, if you're in a pinch and you're out and about, you know, it could be an option. Um, and then wisps, that's these little cheese-like crackers. They're like little, almost bite-sized, just cheese. So, um, or you can make your own at home, you know, again, on parchment paper in the oven, you can just like do little, either piles of shredded cheese or thin slices of cheese, you bake it. Um, until it gets crispy. So sometimes I like to take a, a saucepan at home and I'll melt some cheese, um, just do a, a thin layer of cheese, um, some garlic powder, and then I like the pickled jalapenos, put that in there and, and you just kind of let it melt until it starts to get crispy and take it off, put it on a paper towel because it'll be pretty greasy. But um, then it's crispy and you know you're getting protein uh, without the carbs and lots of flavor so so you can make them yourself too these are a few other um, substitutes so for granola instead of doing granola which is sugar and starch um, do nuts and seeds and you can make your own at home, again, using any combination of nuts and seeds that you like. So whether it's pepitas, you know, the, the shelled pumpkin seeds, um, chia seeds, sunflower seeds, um, flax seeds, or um, any kind of nut that you like. Um, you can keep them whole or you can kind of again take a food processor and pulse it until it resembles the the texture that you want um, and use that in place of granola chaffles instead of waffles um, those are kind of fun they're they're pretty popular right now on, on social media so it's it's basically cheese cheese and egg um, and I think um, like, a, like almond, almond flour, um, but you can make them savory or sweet. So it, you can go either way. Um, they do use mozzarella cheese um, as the base, but you can make them sweet because the mozzarella cheese doesn't really have a flavor um, when it's melted and mixed with something like vanilla and cinnamon. Uh, breading, so you can use Parmesan cheese, um, crush up some pork rinds. Um, you could also do um, like a very fine nuts or seeds, you know, again, like almond flour, something like that, or a blend to make your breading. And then tortillas and wraps, again, using like lettuce, um, lettuce leaves is probably your best bet. But the, I've been seeing more and more of these uh, folios, cheese wraps, and they come in different, different flavors. That would be an option. Um, you know, just again, with the tortillas and wraps, you may see low carb um, tortillas, but they're still, uh, they're, just be, be careful with those. They're, they're low carb, but they're still very dense. They have a lot of fiber in it. In them um, and so they can be very very overly filling okay 
and, and there are, you know, there are cauliflower uh, wraps, there's spinach wraps, flaxseed wraps, there's things, but no matter what you get, always look at the label and see what is actually in the product. You can't always go by the marketing um, terms on the front of the packaging because um, sometimes they can be misleading. And remember, protein first. Um, Got to get your protein in. Your goal is to limit starch and increase fiber. Homemade Trump store-bought. So, of course, you're going to be better. You can control the, uh, the quality and amount of ingredients. Um, but sometimes store-bought, you, you know, convenience. The, I have a lot to say for convenience. So, uh, and always check the ingredient list. Like I said, check the nutrition label and you can go right to the ingredient list. Keep in mind that the ingredient list is listed in descending order by weight. So the first ingredient that's listed is what is primarily in there. So if it says wheat flour, probably just skip on that. Um, and these, if you're on Instagram um, or even Facebook, these are some that I've noticed have really good um, low carb meal ideas and meal um, and snack ideas. Um, in particular, the bariatric meal prep. She's a dietitian, and um, you know hers are geared towards you know those following bariatric surgery. Um, so hers would be most appropriate. And then the, the low carb food court and keto recipes just might give you some ideas. Um, they get really creative. And rather than me reinvent the wheel, you know, you can maybe check out those and, and see what they're doing. Because healthy eating is more than just, you know, grilled chicken and salads, right? You get bored with that after a while and, and want to keep it real and sustainable. So it's all about variety and sustainable so all right let me stop the recording and then i will ask for questions